Okay, so today we are um, starting the unit circle. I have a video up um, creating the unit circle by inserting our special right triangles. If you're having issues with the actual unit circle itself, please go back and reference that video. Um, this part here is for evaluating um, certain angles once we were talking about the unit circle. Um, sometimes I do like to put up those special triangles. So we have our 30, 60, 90. Across from the 30s, one half. The hypotenuse represents the radius, and in the unit circle, that is always one. And across from the 60, we're square root of 3 over 2. Our other special right triangle is the 45, 45, 90. Again, the hypotenuse represents our radius that's being insult inserted into the unit circle. And both the values here are root 2 over 2. So they're asking us to evaluate the cosine of 5 pi over 6. Because the denominator is 6, it means that the semicircle has been cut into 6 equal congruent pieces. And we're using 5 of the 6. So our angle is going to be over here. This is the 5 pi over 6, making our reference angle pi over 6, which is also represented by 30 degrees. What we have is a right triangle inserted in here. Now remember, a circle is being created by that there. We can either look at the coordinates here. So if we're looking for this one, the coordinates here would be negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. In that case, cosine is represented by x over r, but again, our r value is 1. So it would be just negative root 3 over 2. If you're unfamiliar or not comfortable using the coordinates, you can use your reference angle here. If we're talking about um, cosine, so the one half here, root three over two, it's the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and that would get us the same value here. If I'm looking to use the tangent of negative 45 degrees, remember the negative shows the direction in which we rotate, so that would get us here. That's also going to be the reference angle as we drop our triangle straight up to the um, x-axis here. Um, both of these would be root 2 over, oops, root, sorry, get root 2 over 2. Um, and again, the hypotenuse here is always 1. If we're looking for tangent, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so we would have negative root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which would get us 1. If you're just using the coordinates of um, this one here, which we'd have root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, tangent is y over x, so that would put this coordinate over this one, again, getting us to negative 1. Um, over here, the secant of 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 would be the rotation here, leaving us with pi over 3 sitting as our reference angle. Pi over 3 is equivalent to 60 degrees. Um, the coordinate for the 60 degree angle here was negative 1 half root 3 over 2. And again, it's negative for the x because we're in quadrant number 2. Secant is 1 over cosine, so if we have 1 over negative one half. Um, multiplying everything through by 2 over 2, we get negative, um, we just get negative 2. Okay? The other thing we could have done, again, across from the 60 is root 3 over 2, and this guy is negative 1 half. If you're thinking of secant, it's 1 over cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and you can go through it that way as well. Um, let's look at the next three. We're looking at the sine of pi over three. And each time you do one of these, we do want to keep redrawing this. What we want to do is get off the habit of looking at the unit circle and using that as a crutch. You want to figure out each problem individually. I'm looking for the sine of three pi. Each semicircle is pi units. So here's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi is going to land me right here. The coordinate is negative 1, 0. You cannot use your triangles if you're on the quadrantal angles. You're going to have to use the coordinates. Remember, we said sine 
is y over r. Since we're on the unit circle, the radius here is 1. It's just going to leave us with our y value of 0. If I'm looking for cotangent of negative 120 degrees, so I'm rotating this way, negative 120 degrees, leaving me with a 60 degree reference angle. This one becomes the 30. We have 1 half, root 3 over 2. Both would be negative. Cotangent is the um, adjacent over the opposite side. So the adjacent is negative 1 half. The opposite is negative root 3 over 2. You could also, um, at this point, the two negatives will cancel out. I'm going to multiply everything through by 2 over 2. Um, that's going to get us 1 over root 3. And once rationalized, becomes root 3 over 3. You also could have used the coordinates um, of that 60 degree angle, reference angle, sitting there. The cosecant of 315, so 315 degrees here, puts us over here, leaving us with that 45 degree reference angle. Using coordinates for the 45, I always know it's root 2 over 2. I just have to think which is negative. It's the y value there. Cosecant is 1 over sine, or 1 over y in this case, so 1 over negative root 2 over 2 multiplying by 2 over 2 to simplify with this denominator. We get negative 2 over root 2. Rationalizing, you get negative root 2 over 2. These guys cancel and our final answer is negative root 2. Okay, um, examples in finding the six, um, j just finding the values here. This is going to be calculator work. You can ask your teacher if any questions. If I'm putting this problem in the calculator, I see the degree symbol, so the mode has to be in degrees. I know this problem here is radians. Um, please remember that that inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent button do not represent secant, cosecant, or cotangent. So you're going to have to do 1 over the cosine of 2 pi over 15. But this one, your mode has to be in radians. Um, for this one here, you should be getting 0.743. Um, and this one, I believe you get 1.09. Um, this one here, I have the wrong answer on my key. Uh, no, I don't have a calculator with me. So um, again, tangent, this would be radians. We don't see the degree symbol, so you just want to do the tangent of that number and make sure you're in radians. I think possibly it came out to be about 1.06. It could have been negative. Uh, the last thing we need to cover is what happens when we're not on the unit circle. So let's say you're given the point negative 4, 8. So the first thing you want to say to yourself is what quadrant is that in? That happens to be in quadrant number 2. Negative 4 is going to represent the horizontal value. 8 represents the vertical. What we don't know is the hypotenuse here for this angle theta. We could use this using the Pythagorean theorem. So negative 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to the radius squared. 80 is equal to the radius squared. So r winds up being 4 square roots of 5. To find the sine, that's going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 8 over 4 square roots of 5. That simplifies to 2 over the square root of 5 and then rationalized. We have 2 root 5 over 5. If I'm looking for cosine, that's the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So it's negative 4 over 4 root 5. Uh, the 4 is canceling and leaving us negative 1 over root 5. And then again rationalizing negative root 5 over 5. So the final answers are here in here. Tangent is opposite over the adjacent. That's going to leave us with negative 2. To come up with our cosecant, secant, and cotangent, we're going to use the reciprocals or the flips of these fractions. If you rationalize, take a step back before you do the flip, and this way the radical winds up in the numerator. So here we get root 5 over 2. For this one we get negative 
root 5, and this one we're going to get negative 1 half. And with that, we're concluding 5.2.